today's board of directors meeting to order. Uh, any public comment? Seeing none. Please note the roll. Move on to the consent agenda items. First is going to be the minutes of the regular meeting of the board of directors held on February 2nd of 2022. Also the workshop of the board of directors held on February 17th of 2022. The regular meeting of the Michigan South Central Power Agency Board of Commissioners held on December 2nd of 2021. Also the departmental reports of the Board of Public Utilities operation reports and financial statements for January of 2022. The bills and accounts for the period ending February 28th of 2022 and also the power supply cost projections. Do we have any questions on that or anything we corrections? See none, I need a motion. So moved. Support. We've got a motion support. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Moving on to the regular agenda. Uh, first is going to be the Tippett's, Tippett's uh, sponsorship. Chris is here with the report. Hello, Chris. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for letting me come before you again this year. Um, it is for Tibbetts sponsorship and membership. The support of a cold water board of public utilities has been very important to us and has they've been a sponsor since 2015. So there's a little bit of history there. So I'm hoping that I can count on your support again. Uh, the sponsorship for summer theater would be $4,000. And I would recommend it be for the musical, I Love You, You're Perfect, Now Change. And then with that, I would also like to request the continued support through membership of $1,500. Does so anyone have any questions for Chris in regards to what we're sponsoring? Or? Who, wrote I, who wrote I Love You? Um, I don't know who the author is, but it's the third time that we've done the show. It is a series of vignettes. There are six performers that we will have, and they kind of go through all the different life cycles of a relationship from first dating, whether it's be a first date of young people or um, an older couple meeting for a first date at a funeral. Um, so it kind of goes through the whole thing, through different marriages, through divorce, through kids, and it's just, a, it's fun, a lot of great, Great songs, um, including like the single man drought is one of my uh, favorites for that woman that who's been in the dating field and can't quite find the right person. So uh, lots of things. It's, uh, like I said, it has been a very popular one. The first time we did it, we were one of the first in the state to actually perform it at Tippett Summer Theater. So and it's inside the Tippett Summer. It is inside the theater. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully we're coming back to normal. All of our shows will be inside. We are resuming popcorn theater again this year. And uh, hopefully everything goes normal and people return. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important program to, for us to, you know, to be part of. So it produces a lot of income for the city as far as businesses and stuff like that. So it's an economic driver. In 2019 driver. and or, you know, prior to the pandemic, we averaged about 30,000 people that we were bringing to Tibbetts every year. And a third of that comes through summer theater. So it is Oops. an important economic driver to our community. Absolutely. I'll make a motion to approve the request. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Once again, thank you all very much for your continued support of Tibbetts. Thank you. Next is going to be the Bennett Street substation circuit redesign. Yeah, so I'm going to ask Andrew to come up and kind of give you the, the, the kind of the high level what this is about. I could, but I don't think it would be nearly as effective as Andrew telling us about it. But I do know our Bennett Street substation is quite old. It's our, our oldest substation. and It is in some need of some upgrades. Uh, so where this funding will be coming from primarily is if you recall, we sold part of the Jonesville substation, long about, so I shouldn't use the word sold, but we use it to finance this, and that's where those finances will be coming. So with that, Mr. Andrew. Oh, thank you, Jeff, and uh, good evening, members of the board. Uh, as Jeff had mentioned, the proposal in front of you is for the 
uh, redesign of two of the older circuits out of the 8320 metal clad at the Bennett substation. Uh, if you recall, uh, last year we had an outage where a truck pulled down wires along US 12. Uh, as a result, we found out some issues with these two circuits, namely the relays. Uh, the settings were set uh, high. Uh, they are older style electromechanical relays, uh, and they're very inaccurate. Uh, we were having false trips with them, so we bumped the relay settings up to their max. Uh, what we're proposing uh, is to redesign these circuits with modern uh, digital relaying, uh, so we can actually tone that in uh, and have adequate protection uh, for the public and for our linemen. Uh, any questions? So, kind of a couple of different pieces here, and and one of the things um, that this substation feeds in a different voltage than our other substations. So this one's always a little bit of a, you know, not our not our normal voltage. So that's hopefully down the road going to change as well. But that's probably a few years down the road, correct, Andrew? Correct. Yeah, we actually debated on whether or not we should do this project at this time, as we're currently working on a voltage upgrade to get this older 8320 voltage uh, up to our normal system voltage. Uh, there's going to be some delay with that just due to the scope of the project as well as where the older voltage is primarily in residentials as well as, uh, as, well as the downtown area. Uh, main reason we were pushing to get this done uh, immediately is due to the issues that we discovered on these two circuits. Uh, we had to tie the circuits together in the field with other circuits. Uh, so currently if there's an outage on one of those, the scope of the outage is now larger as both circuits would be impacted. Uh, main issue is uh, one of the circuits feeds uh, all the businesses along US 12 as well as the hospital. Uh, so we'd like to mitigate that uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, we are planning to use all of cold water workers to wrap out uh, all of the old gear as well as install uh, the new gear. Uh, to clarify, the $24,000 that's listed here is just for the engineering uh, design. Right. That does not include the materials and the new equipment. And uh, is there an engineering estimate of what the all-in project costs, not our time, but just our out-of-pocket cost would be? Yeah, we're still finalizing the design, but I expect the material will be around $100,000. Just so you guys kind of had some idea of the scope right. of what we're, Make the sure end game of this delay on getting the materials as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> Could be a couple years from now anyway. So, and this is also a, a bit of a safety issue, uh, just because it's, you know, it's nice to split health and safety, but also for our linemen or anybody who's working in that substation as well, so. When will this start? Uh, we are currently working through the design right now. Uh, we are in the, the fact gathering stage, so we're putting together load and uh, drawings for the substation right now. Uh, we would start design immediately and get into procurement immediately. Uh, material lead time specifically for the reclosers that we plan on using is likely going to be 20 to 40 weeks. So, Not anytime soon. Right. Any other questions for Cameron? Okay. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Support. Huh. A motion of support. Backing. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion passes. Okay, you're back up yep. for the uh, relay panel upgrade. All right, are we on Michigan or Bennett? This is Bennett still. Bennett, okay. Uh, so in addition to uh, this, there is another metal clad building there. As Jeff had mentioned, we have two system uh, nominal voltages. This is for the 13.8. Uh, that was as recently rebuilt or refabbed uh, in the early 2000s. There is a mixture of older style digital relaying as well as mechanical relaying. What we are proposing to do is to standardize the design for the relaying uh, with our other substations, upgrade to uh, modern digital uh, relaying. Uh, there would be eight panels in total that would need to get wrecked out. Uh, this would be for the engineering support to uh, decom, install, and uh, program the new relays. And again, total project cost for the engineering is? Uh, so 
the last time we did a project uh, like this, it was about $25,000 a panel. Uh, I would suspect given the uh, current market with inflation and supply chain challenges, uh, that number to be 30 to 40,000. Uh, with eight panels, it would be about uh, $320,000 uh, in material cost. Uh, again, we would have our electricians uh, tear out the old panels and install the new ones. And everything you said before, it kind of still applies. It's still kind of a safety issue. Standardizing your equipment so everybody knows what they're working on the same stuff makes it a little bit easier. Correct. With these new uh, panels, is this like hooked to a SCADA so you guys can it will, know yeah. what trips? Uh, so SCADA will be in the scope of uh, uh, cold water. Uh, they will provide us with the, the roadmap essentially for how to get that connected, uh, but that'll be in our scope of work. But it currently is not on it. There is a on, mixture, on the digital side, but not on the. Uh, it's an older style, so we don't have as much flexibility as we do with the modern system. Currently, we essentially just have status. Uh, with the modern, we'll be able to see analog values, so the voltage, the current, uh, the power that's being used. Right now, we just see if the breaker is closed. Open or closed. Okay. Any other questions on that? Need a motion? I'll move. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Okay, you're back up again for the Michigan uh, Avenue substation. Yes. Uh, so for the uh, final one here, Michigan Ave, it would be the same as the project I just talked about. Uh, just at our uh, Michigan substation. Uh, again, this is uh, already 13.8 as well. Uh, substation was built in the mid 90s. Uh, it would just be ripping out the old mechanical relays and replacing them with electromechanical. Uh, I will note there is a portion of the project that has already been completed. Uh, if you remember while we were installing the, uh, we're constructing the uh, butter substation, we had to do some relay. Uh, or transmission upgrades to support the project. ITC had to rebuild uh, the transmission side of that substation. They required protection from us that we were unable to give them uh, with the older electromechanical relays. So we did upgrade three of the panels there, for the transformers as well as the bus tie. Uh, so this would just be for the six distribution feeders there. Uh, so given that there would be six panels we would be replacing, we expect the material cost to be about $240,000. Okay. Uh, I will note too that uh, while we take the circuits out of service, nobody will lose power. Uh, we'll tie them and redirect the power elsewhere. Uh, so there would not be any uh, outages experienced by the customers as a part of any of these projects. 20 to 40 week lead time again. Yes. Okay. That might be on next year's budget. So, I mean, if we had to keep that in mind, I mean, with all the stuff we're doing here, that it's not going to be all on this year's budget. So, uh, obviously, the engineering cost will be. So, any other questions? Okay. Need a motion? I'll make a motion for the upgrade. Support. Got a motion. Got a support. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next is the Waterworks uh, Park Capital Improvements. Yeah, I've asked Brian to kind of lead us through this a little bit. Um, typically, again, uh, the cost of what we're approving that is under my spending authority, and I would approve the, the project. But we wanted to talk about the larger project because that is Three hundred thousand dollars potentially. Three seventy is the okay. estimate right now. So, but it's so there's no reason to do the engineering if you guys aren't supportive of the bigger project. Sure. Uh, so what this is talking about, and I'm just going to have Brian. Why don't you just jump <clears throat> into it, Brian? So, as everybody knows, I blocked off some roads in the Waterworks Park and made some people mad, <laughs> but we've saved the bank and done some stuff <clears throat> that improved the river bank so it doesn't continue to fall into the river, but. In with that, we got rid of some parking. So this upgrade would actually improve the parking situation. Um, as you can see, the red lines there, all that will be angle parking coming down through. And then where the dirt parking lot, my little green building is, that will be an actual parking lot. So in the blue lines, that used to be the road that goes through the park 
those will be turned into walking paths and connect to our current walking paths that we have. We also are looking at some grants to maybe extend that walking path down by the river on your left hand side, <clears throat> down, in, down in that area and then come back up and tie in. So there's a lot of ins and outs that we can do. There's curb and gutter that we can add. It's in there now, but we can remove it on the parking areas, the sidewalks. You know, this is the 370 is everything besides the walking path down by the river. So if it gets to be where you guys aren't comfortable, we can take curb and gutter out or does that sidewalk need to be you know, on the parking areas back to the sidewalk. There's things we can cut out if it gets to the point where you guys, well, we want to do something, but maybe not that extensive. And just to point out too, this park line is staying to, it. this is, that blue line is, is this parking for the, there's overflow for the schools as well as the yeah, basketball. That, yeah, I'm sorry, that goes a little bit too far. That, yeah, that this school stops parking right, stays. Right there we see the barrier right there so cars can't get through. No, there won't be any cars getting through just, just in the red area. But I mean, there'll be some kind of barrier right there, which yeah, I was yeah. talking about to make sure people yes. don't actually yeah. drive back there. Like, yeah. Well, we're hoping to just have a walking path side. Well, so you know, people, they may I'll, I'll put some split rail fence or something. I'm sure I'll have to put there so they can't get down there. But well, yeah, people are persistent. Yes. And another suggestion I had was that at the on the east side, that could fork to the bridge. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the bridge, maybe a walking path that goes to the fair entrance. We have a milled a, a path made out of millings there right now. We did that a few years ago, so it was a lot. It turned into mud by the time the fair was over. So we actually cut that all out and put millings in and rolled it. So it's not a paved area, but I definitely could pave that too if that's what you guys want to do. And that's where my cursor is. Yeah. That's right. Well, I mean, depending on what the cost is, if we're gonna make, if we're gonna yep. make changes, that would be a change I think would be appreciated by people. Yeah, especially I, fair I time. totally agree. More. It, it, the the change has been amazing to watch the people walk and play and compared to the cars parked all over the place and garbage and food and well, one i don't think everyone appreciates what you guys were trying to do so maybe yeah. there's some way we can get some information out again because you know from time to time you still hear people complaining about yeah and they don't understand the erosion issues and the and the geese and all of that i think yeah. people understand they just don't People yeah. Comments on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I can't park where I usually parked. I right. parked there for I 15 years. Well, it's the erosion plus the E. coli and mm -hmm. yeah, and and we want to keep and that's our water <clears throat> system down there. We got to keep us. We got to yeah. keep it clean and safe. Yeah, and if they go from parking alongside the road to parking 15 feet out into the grass, and then everybody parks out there. Last year, I think I sent Keith a picture of what Emily was commenting that was asked if we were gonna enhance that parking area. Well, it wasn't a parking area. It was in the middle of the, the <laughs> grass. <laughs> so. And we know there's always been discussion about uh, soccer fields in this area. Um, it, it's going to be quite costly to put soccer fields there. So not sure if that uh, problem is nothing grows in that sand that's there and it's really not absolutely so you'd rip it all out to put it in. So, you know, is this I, we've got some other ideas, so again, not to go into that discussion tonight, but that is that is I know that's been on our minds. Um, there's been some really nice improvements. You know, if you've really noticed, uh, they had a lot of uh, equipment uh, down in this area here, which is always covered. Brian and his crew brought it up here, and it's used more. It's more public. It doesn't get as much graffiti on it because uh, it's now seen, as opposed to it became you know very uh, just wasn't a good place to have it originally so it's kind of in the woods but it was also a, a bad place for bad kids to hang out so we want to so by moving that up there but we do ha still have soccer nets there yep. we move them around you know unfortunately it becomes muddy because they always want to play in the same spot uh there is the other hindrance is there's a great big a storm sewer in the middle that everybody says well why can't you well we can't relocate that as i said so it really doesn't bode well to put a soccer field over top of a drain so uh, so I know those are some of the things that have always come up as a, well, why don't you just do it? It looks easy, but then you don't want somebody falling into the drain or bumping down, running through a field, then coming across the storm drain. Is there a room for a soccer field on the other side of the street in that area? Over by the, the pond? The, the, there really is. It's not, it's not that it's not room. It's that it's, it's undulating and it's not flat. And there's a lot of trees in that area. Um, and it just isn't quite big enough, even on the other side. I've looked at every possible location. The best spot is, is which we set up before was on the, the, 
fairgrounds itself because they agreed to do it. We put the nets there and then they never played there. You know, there's a sand volleyball court that's open to the public except for fair week. And I don't think it really gets used so much. So is that your, I mean, you're there yeah, every day. We're gonna, we're, we keep looking at different options of what we can do. I mean, technically there is a soccer field there. It's just not marked out or it's too, it's actually not the right size to do it, but we, we keep it up. We keep preparing the nets. We keep moving them around. The kids use it like crazy, but I agree. There could be some enhancements, but it's just, it's just not there. What yeah. we can do is just not there, but I've got some different ideas. So we're going to, I'm going to look at some stuff and I'll probably be back to see you. Are there any grants we can apply for? To field turf. With that? Field turf right there. Yeah. That we, we, we can, he's going to have a look at a couple of different yeah. options. Yeah. I've got Fitchpeck looking at grants and other things that we can do in that area. That's what the, they're starting with the walking path. They're looking for grants for that, but they're usually just minuscule 10,000, you know, but I don't can't remember what the price tag on was 60 grand or something right. to put that in there. So, yeah. and then that's not including irrigation and all that stuff that goes along with it. So. Okay. Just one last, so just so I understand, parking wise, the only parking that's angled parking and then parking in this enclosed area? Yep, yep. That's the only part. So, like right above that enclosed area, that's not parking. That's just parking. No, around. that'll be the turnaround to come back out. Okay. Is Will there be an opportunity for people that may want to park there that shouldn't be parking there but are going to attempt mm, to? I can't imagine somebody just parking. We'll probably have to put posts up and keep them off of the grass so they don't pull off up in the right. grass in that area. It's always a struggle. Yeah. So, we'll, it'll probably be a play by ear. Somebody will find a spot. Hey, I can do this. And then we'll take it away from them. And just like we have in the past, but at least we've got some actual parking and clean it all up down there. So it's not mud and holes. And is there an estimate for how many parking spots are going to be in this? Um, it hasn't got that far. That's why we're asking for the 21,500 to get the engineering done on it. Do it. Okay. Need a motion. That was an emotion. I'll make the I'll officially make the motion to approve it. Sure. Second. Mm -hmm. An emotion and a second. Will that? Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. You're up again, Brian. Yep. Michigan, Washington, Perkins, utility and road improvements. Enlighten us. Enlighten us. Uh, South Michigan Avenue is one of the projects. Uh, we're upgrading the water main size there to get better flow to the Sealy Booster Station, kind of the same thing we did on Sauk River. Um, that is a six inch main, water main from Sauk River to US 12, or almost to US 12. That's in this area here. Mm -hmm. Yep, so to try to ease the, uh, having to put another water tower in and some of the other things, we need to get better flow to those booster stations to the high pressure district. Um, also in, this is Washington. Right there. Yeah. Along with the Michigan Avenue, we're going to upgrade that, but there's also, uh, we talked about putting stubs to every home that's here, whether they hook up or not, but at some point they all have wells on both yep. sides of the road. Wells and septic. Yep. As well as making sure that the, the, the water is on the west side of the road. So there's a big open field there that that would ever hook up, but that would have the build availability there. Plus we would also have the ability then to, uh, or we got a water loop to cross if it ends up going to um, uh, the old trailer park home as well. So that, so by doing that, it has some other advantages um, there, but we didn't want to let people know people could hook up if they wanted to. We're going to, you know, put the leads in ahead of time. Are they on sewer there, city yeah. sewer? No, they're on well and septic. septic. And we talked there's, about. Yep. There's like two people on septic and one person on water. All the rest are. Wells and septic. We, we didn't talk about renting the sanitary leads though, but the sanitary is on the west side as well, correct? Yes, they're both on the west side. So if we're going to be tearing it all up, now would be the time we'd even put the sanitary leads. Um, so and there's no taps that, for the ones that don't have, there's no, no taps there? No. That makes sense why they're not hooked to it yeah. then. And we'll keep, we've got it engineered to put those in and we'll keep track of the cost associated with those taps. And then when people want to hook up, they're there, but we'll recoup some of our Take costs back. Yeah. So. Okay. And full disclosure, he owns some property. That's why I also want to bring it up. So it's, it would be my recommendation, not his recommendation, <laughs> that those be put in because it just makes sense for the future. It does. Absolutely. So, I mean, you're already turning the road up. Yep. So, but I didn't want to point that out. So yeah. somebody say, well, we're doing it just for him. No. Nope. Not at all. 
I wouldn't do anything for him. <laughs> Nobody would. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, go ahead. No, that's all right. Uh, Washington and Perkins, uh, there was some infiltration found on the sanitary sewer line on Perkins during the last flow testing we did. Um, and Keith was redoing those roads. So we're not going to let Keith put a new road in and us not upgrade our utilities underneath there. So there was some back and forth. I think Perkins was not going to get a full rehab and then Keith decided to do full rehab on that. So as long as he was doing that, we upgraded the water. Our share is uh, 680,000 on water and 110 on the sewer for these. Um, that does not include the 80 some thousand dollars we have with granite that we approved at the last meeting yep. to do some lining where we thought we could line we're lining it because it's cheaper but yep so and that starts that's starting tomorrow so there's certain pre-work on that tomorrow so we're asking the flow bid that came in and i forgot to bring that with me uh was on the memo it's coming oh concord 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 one, uh, one, one, one yep yeah, one million two thirty seven so we're asking that you approve that today with lead times and everything. Some of the stuff is 26 weeks out. So they are wanting to get ordering. So And again, this doesn't go, it has to, so the 1.2 includes the road. So this still has to go to city council for their approval as well. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not going to be funded with it. We're not borrowing money to funding this. We're uh, paying for this all out of uh, reserves. Okay. So And our experience with Concord Excavating? This has been really good. Yes, they We've are with them. one of the two people I would, Love to work with every time. Okay. So. Any other questions? What is the decision of the board? Motion to approve. Support. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion passes for Concord excavating. Concord out of Concord. What's that? It's Concord excavating out of Concord, Michigan. No. I believe yes. So. Yes. 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 Next on the agenda is the Michigan South Central Power Agency Commissioner appointment. Turn over to you, Jeff. Yep. This all these next couple of things do is just removes me and puts on Paul. So this is just an administrative thing. So um, you should probably do them separately because they'll need different uh, motions. So, um, but this just makes uh, Paul the the uh, main, and so Keith, Andrew Cameron is still the alternate on. Do we need to have a date? Because that doesn't come effective today then. Uh, it'll be effective March 7th when he starts, when okay. he becomes employed. Okay. Technically, there's one more meeting tomorrow. That's why I said that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Technically, make sure that yeah. we're, we're we should here. say effective, uh, that, uh, I should have put that on there, my apologies, but it will be effective March 7th when he <clears> starts. Okay, need a motion? Motion to approve. Or Got a motion, got a support. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Again, same with the next one. Yep. Amp board presentation. And this this will have to go to this one? Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. You got one more after that, but this will have to go to city council. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Support. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. <clears throat> Motion passes. Next is going to be the Branch County Economic Growth Alliance Board appointment. Jeff? Same thing. Uh, it's it, The seat is by uh, the position, so it's not necessarily even me. It's the, the BPU holds the seat, so you have to appoint somebody to replace me. Okay. And the motion, motion is to approve. appoint Paul. <coughs> motion. Got a motion? Support. Uh, support. My turn, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is Project 5, natural, natural uh, gas turbine. Yes. Yeah, so at the last board workshop, uh, Pam Sullivan was here, uh, talked about the capacity issues. I know it's very technical. Um, I know it is not something that we, even myself, handles typically in our day jobs. Uh, so uh, be glad to answer any questions you have. I don't want to 
tie into it too much, um, but I have all the stats here if you want to go into more detail if you had questions. Basically, what we what the what I would recommend is that the board continue down the path and going to DPP three, which is a, the definitive planning phase. Um, there is risk that if all of a sudden we were to pull out of this, that we would have to pay for our two hundred eighty thousand dollars and get nothing for it. If you want to look at it that way, but in one way we've done we got something for it because this, there's still studies that MISO has that says hey. If we were to make upgrades, so it's not like even that would be a total loss. If we decide not to move forward, we would immediately have to withdraw our filing with the Michigan Cell, uh, with the uh, Public Service Commission that says we have in we have under contract our plan to provide capacity for the four-year planning phase. So. If we decide not to move forward with this, the option would be we need to immediately withdraw, refile, and, and enter into contracts. Uh, as I said at the meeting, you know, those numbers I think they said was, was anywhere from like two extra two million dollars. Keeping in this project allows us to do two things. One, we can still evaluate what is going on um, with, with capacity in Michigan. It's going to take us past the next auction period. Yes, we do have some, some funds at risk. Uh, but it also buys us time, which is probably the most critical thing. Uh, the other thing it does is it also allows us to, for $282,000, prevent us from spending $2 million. So there is a little bit of gamesmanship here a little bit. Um, I, I, again, you know, the risks are known. If the legislature says you, we will not allow fossil fuels in the future, that's a risk. That is, and it's a real risk. It's what's going on in Prairie States, Illinois. Will it be in this time frame? Probably not. This is about a 20 year asset. So you're looking about 2040. Uh, even Prairie States was going to be allowed to run for a while. Um, so I think, you know, there's also seasonal risk. Um, MISO is looking at now going to a seasonal construct, whereas before, you know, and we're a winter peaker. So all of a sudden that, if they do that, well, we got to provide more capacity. So we may have to even have this plus more stuff. And we're going to need more stuff. Um, Another item is people want green. This isn't green, but as more and more green stuff comes online and more and more coal plants start closing, you know, the, the positives, less the negatives aren't quite equaling out. There's going to be a missing middle. So this might run more in the future than what we planned on. However, I want to be perfectly clear. This thing is to sit and look pretty. It is not even going to run the majority of time. People, it, I know it's hard to wrap your arms around that, but it basically is sitting there for the insurance reason say, hey, we need power and we need to turn on now. And it's a peaking unit. It means it's not running at, at higher gas costs. It usually turns on when gas prices are either uh, at, a, at a, when energy prices are high and gas prices still make it, we can produce our own energy cheaper than the market can, okay? So this is a capacity only issue. Uh, we do have to make sure that Hillsdale and Clinton go forward with it as well. Uh, my understanding is both of those municipalities are willing to go to the next phase. Nobody's committing yet. This doesn't commit us to anything for the future. Um, could there be other outside sources that join us? That's still a possibility. You know, we have talked to MPPA and some others and, you know, but I think as the market goes and as we get to the auction, the what capacity is going to do in the future, you know, the crystal ball gets one one shade clear. It's it's still not going to be crystal, but it will be a little less foggy. So um, we can go over all of the co water. I, I've kept Pam's presentation uh, in the packet so we can review it. Um, this is a big decision. Down the road is when the big decision to make, and I do want to retract one thing I said. This does have to go to city council approval. This is a power sales agreement, not a power purchase agreement. So the slight difference, but we will be guaranteeing the debt, which means it will need to go to city council for their approval. Um, but it, it really won't go to their approval until we're ready to issue debt. So the planning phase at this point, you know, that's why we really want this to be a joint discussion because it does no good if this board says yes and they and the council says no. It's really a community decision in the end. But with that, I'll open up any questions, I, and I do apologize for, for leading that uh, 
conversation is straight, but it wouldn't have changed anything at this point or my recommendation. So allocation is still the same as what it was at, at workshop. Yes, allocation is, is still the same. Uh, I believe we're at 33 and a third megawatts of that number. Uh, 30, oh, excuse me, this one. So cold water, 33.3. And this is what we have. As you can see, anything above that deadline, we're technically long in. We know we're going to be adding some growth. Uh, we know that there's businesses that are going to be growing in the future. So, you know, this and they that, that line is flat, but ultimately we know it's probably going to go up. Electric vehicles are coming. You know, all these things, you know, everything you, you do need power nowadays. It's going to continue to, to grow. Uh, Clemens, whether they ever expand, Maroa, uh, Sama, Boltec. So all those things are potential. And then you would see, you know, we won't be nearly as long. But once you go to 20, the year, the, the filing year 24, if we don't do something, we got to replace it with something else. We are buying quite a bit of solar already. Uh, that's, if you look at that is that 12.9, um, that's a minimum. We probably would actually like to do a little more than that. Um, but that's kind of where we are. If we would have had this on the, as an asset on the ground right now, would we have ran it this morning? We ran that project four, we ran <clears throat> turbine one, I think this morning. Yeah, I, I and don't know it, how long did it run for? Just a couple hours? Yeah, see, okay. every once in a while we'll run and we'll catch some high numbers, but it typically goes up and it drops right down. Or, it's, or there's a, a big need for a little bit. Uh, a better example would have been, oh, I think it was a month or so, three, four weeks ago. All of a sudden, power prices got ridiculous, and it was only for like three hours. But Dave Luce was there, saw it, turned on his engines. Well, he, for 13 megawatts of that, he was able to sell energy at, you know, I think it was almost 500 it touched 700, but it didn't end up. It's always, you get paid to what it ends the hour at, but I think it was 500 or so, right? That's a lot. Yeah, well, considering the market now, you know, throughout the day was anywhere from 35 to 45 today. Mm -hmm. So I don't know with gas prices in Russia and, uh, you know, on the unfortunate people in Ukraine where that's going to go, but uh, that will come into play as well. I saw natural gas prices are about 60% today. Uh, I heard gas is now. 374. And a megawatt is 265. That, yeah, would not surprise me. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So there are some, there will be some years, you can see the yellow. Um, ultimately, that is when we're going to be long. We would sell that back in the market. Um, other people, you know, it's 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 a commodity, right? You know, this is your, you know, this is when, this is the risky part about being in the electric business. You're really running a stock market game. You're in the commodities market. And uh, there's no two ways about it. I wish there was an easy answer. I wish I was going to see this through um, or could help you guys and, and kind of put Paul, a new guy, in, in kind of a little bit of a lurch on this. But uh, um, again, I, I think it's worth moving to the next phase for sure. It's the same decision we had when we did Project 4. We had, it, was, it was capacity issues there when we did Project 4 out on, uh, on Fillmore. We had to do the exact same thing because we were going to start getting penalized. And really, even with this asset on the ground, we're still getting paid for it. We, when, when you figure out what it would have cost if we didn't have it. it, it you know, and, and the problem is, I think, and this is the way to look at it. Um, this is the easiest way I know how to describe it, okay? So if you look back, you know, and this is the, this is um, Michigan Cle Cleared at Cone. You guys have heard me say that, that's $7.83, okay? That means that's, the, that's what you're paying for that contract. If you look at what this is projected to cost, and I... Give me a minute while I look, find the right slide. So this is, you know, so remember the, the 783, and this is the most important slide on the schedule, okay? It's saying that un, under the best case scenario or a, a normal case scenario, we're gonna pay $5.84, okay? 783 versus 584, it's still a, a good deal if it reaches cone. Now, it could clear for 15 cents and makes no rhyme or reason. But this is really what you're, you're having it. This is what you're going to pay to have it sit there and do absolutely nothing a month. It could go as high as 661. Now, that's almost cone. Can you get a contract, a 20-year contract, for less than $5.84? We've asked Pam that question, or I have specifically. 
to get that answer um, because I want to know what a legitimate contract from an actual proposal would be so that the next phase you can, before you make the final decision, you're going to say, I could get a contract today for this versus this price. So this is the number you want to do now. But Jeff, you told me that that number is really $3.35 because they're planning on this engine running some of the time. If the engine never runs, that's what you're paying. Currently, you could probably get a contract less than $5.84, okay? But when you can sit, when, when that thing's running, you, you keep whittling that number down, there's a break even point there at some point. What that number is, I have no idea because I can't predict the future how often this is going to run. So this is, if you remember nothing else from this conversation, this is a slide. You got to remember and ask the question, what would a contract, a fixed contract cost me for a 10 years or a 20 year deal? That's what you want to compare it to before you make your final decision. Right now, I think there'd be a cheaper contract, but I do think this engine will run some. So that's where that comes into play. Andrew, do you have anything? Andrew's really more tied in. I'd like to have his comments as well. He's the he's really the expert in the room, not me. Uh, yeah, I would agree with everything that Jeff has said at this point. I'm not um, your boss. You can you can. Do okay. it. <laughs> uh, there's really three buckets of uh, costs that make up our power supply uh, costs. Uh, the biggest is going to be energy. I think that's the easiest to understand. That's just the volumetric rate for how many kilowatt hours or megawatt hours you consume. Uh, the next is transmission, which is just getting the energy to cold water. And then the third, which is probably the most complex, is what we're discussing with capacity. Uh, another way to think about this is reliability. This is just planning for if everybody is using their peak energy at one time. We need to be able to uh, build the infrastructure large enough and have enough generation assets to support it. Uh, so when you're thinking about capacity, think about reliability. As Jeff had mentioned, this would be a capacity asset. So we just need it for reliability. <coughs> and financially, it makes sense even if it doesn't run, if it doesn't produce. Uh, as Jeff had mentioned, currently uh, the capacity auction cleared at 15 cents per kilowatt month. Uh, you can't get a bilateral contract for that amount. It's around $5 in the bilateral market. The risk ends up being that when the capacity auction closes in the next couple of weeks, it will likely clear at 15 cents again, but we can't get a contract for anywhere near that. Uh, however, if it goes to Cone again or costs a new entry, that cost is going to go up. Uh, there are some intrinsic benefits to it being an asset rather than just a, a paper contract. Mainly, if we're planning on this uh, asset being on our books for 20 years, if it runs for 30, that's 10 years where there's no debt service and we have avoided capacity costs. Um, it, it makes sense. The biggest risk ends up just being that uh, if there's legislation against carbon assets uh, and just the risk of how much we're taking. We'd like if the other members of the agency had a, a larger slice, uh, but given MISO uh, or the auction or the uh, energy market that we play in is looking to change the rules for capacity, namely going to a seasonal capacity construct, our obligations are going up. Uh, while other assets like wind and solar will be derated or have less value uh, in the winter seasons. So getting one of those contracts would require us to buy uh, two or four times as much solar for an equivalent uh, thermal resource. It's not that we don't want to be green. I mean, we really are trying to look at different green energy sources, but it comes at a cost. Well, well green isn't always 100% green. <laughs> well, it comes from, <laughs> that, 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 not that it matters, but that in, in we're not taking the full cost in, into consideration. Even if you look at our 1.3, you know, Andrew can show you the numbers and there's lots of months they don't produce a lot. So I don't want to rely on all those. And, and we mentioned uh, Bell River and Campbell are both closing, right? Correct. They're very large uh, coal fired plants, thousand megawatts each, I believe, if not bigger. Uh, they're in, uh, consumers owns them. We're not in the project, but NPPA is, well, they're closing. You take out 2,000 megawatts, you gotta replace it with something. Well, that's great, but in Michigan, it gets pretty cloudy. So if it's cloudy, 
when those come offline, what are they going to turn on? We're one of the only, uh, I think we said there's five natural gas in this, that is in the MISO uh, natural gas engine. So we're not alone in this, but there's how many else in Michigan? Is there five uh, in Michigan or five in MISO? 14 total in the MISO queue. Uh, MISO has a large footprint from portions of Canada down to the Gulf Coast, uh, but there are four in Michigan, uh, but 14 total in the MISO footprint. So is there any worst case scenario of going too far with green energy and seeing what that does to the consumer and what that does to the business environment when energy is going through the roof because you can't consume it? Consume it because it's yeah. you, there's nothing spinning. There's it, no sunshine. During the day, it's great. Uh, if batteries could could uh, hold all the energy being generated, I think there would be a bigger case for it. But today, that's not the case. Uh, as batteries coming along and will they be better? Great. Then the problem is what we do with the batteries when they're expired. Yeah. You know, is that creating a, a bigger, you know, environmental issue? That, I, you just don't know that answer. Uh, I know Andrew has some pretty. Uh, go ahead, Andrew. I'll let you. I was biting my tongue. On yeah, I knew you were. So <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I will say on uh, on this being a peaking plant, uh, it is market dispatch. So when the power prices are higher, it will be uh, will be run. Uh, the issue ends up being in what we've experienced with Project Four is the cost of electricity and natural gas are coupled together. So as electricity prices go up, natural gas prices go up. We won't end up in a situation where gas prices are cheap and electric prices, uh, prices are high. We're usually just on that bubble. Uh, there are also plants that are peaker plants uh, that are much larger, that are doing the same thing that we're doing, that are watching the market and as they see a three thousand dollar price as jeff had mentioned uh, they turn their plants on which is why we see that price and then it quickly goes away can this turbine be started remotely or do we actually have to dispatch someone to the site to do it uh, it can be dispatched remotely uh, given that it's connected to the bulk electric system to the transmission grid uh, there's more hoops to jump through than dispatching project four which is connected to the distribution to us they are. They do want it to be dispatched remotely. Um, we have. I. I guess I'll say. I don't want to blame anybody else. So if this doesn't work out, we do have it. Uh, kind of an arrangement that uh, Dave Luce at Project Four will be over doing the 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 checks or the daily. Hey, is, is it still there? Nobody stole it. You'll be visiting the site and kind of doing those things, kind of like a preventative maintenance type things. But again, we're not touching the engine. Um, they're pretty much going to be controlling it for AMP, but he would be doing this daily inspections for the most part. Okay. So it will, it will not be manned. There won't be a, a facility there by any stretch. Is it possible we'd have to turn this on if there was a very high demand for energy, regardless of what the market was? Yes. Uh, so this will likely be put into other uh, markets. Uh, so we're planning on just putting this in as capacity. We can also participate in energy. Uh, there's also uh, what's called ancillary services, so we could get into demand response, frequency response, uh, reactive response. So we might be called upon by either the transmission company or MISO, uh, and they'll pay us for doing so. So if there was a heat wave in the summer and everybody is using their air conditioners and there was a high demand for energy, is that kind of the situation you're talking about where they would ask for that extra energy? Yes. We have that now. Uh, we, we occasionally will get a max gen alert from MISO say, hey, it's gonna be a high use day, please make sure you're ready to roll with your engine. So, and there's up, there's so many days if you're on maintenance, if you, you can have scheduled maintenance, but if they call max gen report, and you're not ready to go, there's penalties to pay. We had that actually happen to us a couple years ago. But that's a benefit to us, we get paid to, to do that? Yes. We do, yes. Based on the allocation, our cut was 39 million. The, um, our, I'm thinking that right. Of the, of the dollar amounts, um, I don't know if they had the dollars. Yeah, uh, that's the amount at risk. So we are the total all in potential cost was I think this is a, let me make it a little smaller so you can read it. So the the best case um, again I, I think the base case is the better example because I do think this twenty year and five percent interest rate. Of course, you know who knows what's going to happen in interest rates, what's going on in the markets today. Uh, but I think you're going to see this financing cost go down. But so we're all in at fifty four million so our you know we're, we're taking 75 percent of this uh so you're, you're looking at 35 38 million dollars would be our our share 
has marshaled anything from them? I I have had several conversations with Marshall uh, as recently as last Friday. No good answer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're going to do. Right. Um, they just don't feel like they want to participate in this project, which is their right. And um, but it would help if they would take a few megawatts from us. But it's not going to move. So uh, again, I don't know what their plans are. Uh, they're still trying to figure it out, but um, so it, it is. Have, so do they have to, like the worst case where we would have to invest in a $2 million, are they, they having to do something they, like that? If we decide to pull out tomorrow or right. tonight, if we decide not to move forward, they would immediately have to go spend money as well. And okay. they are they are very short on their uh, capacity, mm -hmm. which means they, it would probably be more expensive for them than us. Because they, they are really using us a little bit because, again, we are long. Yeah. So they're taking some of the advantage of us being long by saying, hey, we'll, we'll just ride. So they're kind of getting, a, in a way, they're getting a little bit of a free ride. I mean, not that it would cost them anything anyway, um, but they, they get the advantage of, of us riding along this and without having to commit either. So, so it, it is a benefit to them. But it's, it's to the point where um, we need to hold their feet to the fire say, what's your plan? Because right. we're telling you ours, and you're not telling us theirs, and so it's, it's so they understand my position, uh, made it abundantly clear, and and they respect it, and um, but they they're trying they're they're trying. It's not like they're they're not, not trying, but it's just a, it's just a very difficult situation. It's helping them, but it's not helping them. It's because helping us not help. Because we're not giving them money. By no, 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 no. But if they if they have a capacity issue where they don't have enough power for themselves. That's a problem for them. That doesn't really affect us per se no. because we have the capacity on our side. And, of it. and you got to remember, they're in a little different market. I mean, I'll defend them here a little bit. So I believe they only have one source in to town, one transmission source. But well, we have three. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how important it is. And, and so for them to only have one source, so if something happens to them, they're out until they get that line fixed. If that were to happen, they have the grow facilities. They have nothing. So they really want to have some backup generation. Which coal water has no backup generation. We can't turn anything on without power coming in. We're, we're dead in the water. However, if all three of our sources die now, because we have our, the entire region would be out. I mean, Hills will be out, Marshall will be out, everybody south of Battle Creek, all the way to Indiana. Correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew. So we have the advantage of having three transmission lines. So that, that reliability is pretty good. That's why there's not a need for us to go out and have behind the meter generation. Mm -hmm. So their view is a little bit different, as is Hillsdale, because they're like, we really need some behind the meter generation because they only get one pipe. If that pipe breaks, they got nothing. So our, you know, people don't realize the advantages of bringing Clemens here and getting that third ITC line in mm -hmm. has meant to our community. No longer will we have the problem of October 8th. I remember the date because it's the first week I had started. So um, that is when you're going to see that situation would not have happened now. So, anyway. Andrew, anything else to add? Yeah, as uh, Don had mentioned on renewable, there's two things that we're seeing from our industrial customers is that they're wanting renewable for uh, a corporate response, either for the PR or for the people that they're supplying their, their parts or their materials to are requiring it of them. Uh, what we typically ask is if they're fine just receiving a REC or renewable energy credit or certificate for it, or if they want an asset to point to. Uh, RECs are fairly cheap. Uh, it's about $6 a REC, uh, which is one megawatt hour, works out to about six cents a kilowatt, uh, 0 0.6 cents per kilowatt. It's fairly cheap just to buy a piece of paper that says it's from renewable. Uh, funny enough too, if we were to build a solar plant and sell the RECs, we can't legally call that renewable. Uh, it's the rec that makes it renewable. Interesting. But we currently offer the green option for billing right now. That is correct. Not recs, though. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. We have a total of four customers on it. One half is being this room to be named nameless. Tom. I won't give you. <laughs> and when we did the solar field, I mean, we everyone wanted to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but and we found out we really can't. You know. We originally wanted, to, and really, we're still looking at this. We we think the best option for even our industrial customers is a community solar program. 
we wanted to sell this as a community solar. However, we don't own it. And you can't sell something or even lease something you don't own. And so that's why that never could turn out to be, in the end, why we didn't have a community solar out there. Otherwise, we'd love to. But in the end, we're like, well, how can we give something away that we don't own and we don't lease? Uh, we just pay a contract for it. So it'd be like me leasing your car to, to Terry. So anyway. But we would like to have our own solar. I still believe the best spot is alongside I-69. Can't be used for anything. But again, the numbers just don't pencil. Maybe when batteries come into play. So Andrew's going to make that, you know, after I'm gone. So anyway. And don't get me wrong. I'm not for pollution. I just, I have, a, <laughs> oh. I, and that's what ends up being. If you're not green, then you're for pollution. I'm not for pollution. Yeah, nobody so, at this table is. and. Uh, we're definitely not, you know, we're, you know, one of the, you know, our missions is to be good stewards of our community, our sure. land. And uh, so sure. we want to continue that. And I know Andrew would do a, we'll, we'll get the right spot. So. Good. So I think we should move. any other questions on capacity? I know this is a major issue and some people may feel totally different. Just one question. Is Sturgis, would they be interested in something like this? Are they, are they even eligible <laughs> to help us out if they wanted to? Yes, but no. Now, Sturgis is in a different, um, it's funny because Sturgis, you think that, well, we're in MISO, they've got to be in MISO. Well, no, they are in PJM, and they're one of five communities in Michigan that are actually in the PJM market, which is basically the whole eastern half of the United States. But for whatever reason, they have one little slice that goes into, and it starts at Sturgis. Sometimes I wish we were one way or the other. So really, no, because they got a whole different set of rules. So... Weird. Yeah. So could they take some? Yeah, they could. Every met there's 40 municipal members in the state of Michigan, municipal uh, power agencies in the state of Michigan. 26 of which belong to MPPA. We are the five members that belong to Michigan South Central. Then there's other members. The balance of them are in the in, uh, WPPI, which is up in the UP. Everybody who's in MPPA could take a share if they wanted to, but it's they got their own thing going. So, and because we're part of AMP, we're really kind of in this middle, we're kind of a ping pong ball because we're part of AMP, but we're also part of MPPA. And it's like, we just can't seem to dance sometimes. So, but we're, we're trying to get there sooner, better later. I know that's more what you want. Like mine, but yes. Yeah, I, 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 it took a while. I, I've done well having Andrew. You have, you come a long way, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I can talk kilowatts with Andrew there. Gets me excited. So, yeah. any other questions? Thank you. What is the uh, desire of the board? Can we move forward? I'll support that. Okay, we got to we'll call a motion. Motion to move forward. Let's support. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is Pat, Aspen Wireless Progress Report. He's all high tech. Oh, he's tough. He's <laughs> one up all he's, trying, right he, now. he's just trying to, he's always one, he's always one up in me because he knows I can't. It's going to be about freezing here for the next couple of weeks. You could probably get some uh, trenching in. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see where to start. Keep my glasses. I have to use this thing to see where okay, it is. I think it's on my yard all, all winter for them. Nothing done now. <laughs> I don't see it. What phase are we? Go. Like the last. We're, we're in the last phases. Oh. And we're underground, right. so we can't do it until the weather's a lot nicer. We yeah. Can. Except so, for I've got conduit. I've said it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> you got conduit. You can probably get his in. Yeah, so February is a bit of a disappointment. Uh, you know, we had some pretty rough weather there. I don't think, and then of course with all the quarantining, I, you know, I don't think we're in a, you know, an exclusive place there, but we did not turn up any nodes uh, last month. Um, 10 and four are on the brink. Um, we've QC'd 10 all week we could, and we're waiting for the other crews to come in and fix it, but they're, I mean, they were sitting, sitting, I don't know what Craig did there. Something happened. We'll turn it back on. It got turned off somehow. Oh, he's looking at that. 
you know, we were we really were hoping to be done by now. Um, we thought we could get, you know, a little more of the aerials done in certain areas. There are some areas that we're going to be looking to turn down on the old system mm -hmm. uh, or unplugging people. They just kind of force them to say, hey, you got to get off the old because we like guess are turning it down and start moving them. We're not quite there yet. Uh, we continue to add customers every week. Um, so go ahead. Next you can time. see that you know, we only added 46, and that was a disappointing number for us. Uh, we've got a big backload of people that want to get installed that we can't because they're underground. Um, but hopefully the weather keeps going as it is, and, and we can start trenching stuff in again and getting some conduit in the ground. Um, we do expect, well, I'll just read it to you. <laughs> Apparently something's going on. Not just me. Not just you. <laughs> He's just trying to make me feel good at my last meeting. So. Yeah, so it looks like 10, 4, 2, and 15 are, are just on the brink of getting uh, turned on, but they have not yet. Um, if we look at the budget, or if I look at the budget and you guys look at me, I can see that we have about $882,000 remaining in the budget. Um, so things are going well there. Um, the last mile cost. Uh, remaining budget in that is about 124000 um, So we're doing well there. We do have an issue with our uh, bucket truck that you guys ordered. I believe it was in, oh, what year was that? The black one? Uh, was that 2020 or 2019 we ordered that? 20, the black, oh, the new, oh, the new bucket truck. The new bucket truck. It was ordered in 2019. 2019, it was supposed to show up in November of last year um got moved to january then it got moved to march and now i think we're to june um so we continue to struggle getting that piece of equipment to us although we did go out and pick up that that bucket truck from amp um and although it's not perfect and we put a little bit of money into it um uh, uh, it has saved our saved our uh, day um, on several occasions and if we wanted to, we could turn around and sell it right now for a profit because there aren't any bucket trucks out there. Um, uh, another issue that we see coming down the road and we're kind of working, working on is the CPE equipment that we're using currently. That's the customer premise equipment that would be kind of like the cable modem for fiber. Um, those are made in Latvia. Um, and Latvia is a neighbor of Belarus. And Belarus is the only buffer between what's going on in Ukraine right now. Uh, so whether or not they're involved in that, certainly shipping from that area could become more problematic. So we're looking at other, other pieces of equipment um, and getting them in house to test them just in case. We hope we don't have to do that. Um, we do have a pretty good inventory of them right now, but we don't have enough to meet that. You know, that we have enough to not to get to the 1200 quite, uh, we'd be close. Um, uh, but of course we want to move past that as well. I mean, if we get more than 1200 customers, we want to keep going. Uh, so we are looking at, you know, at what's going on over there and, and trying to make sure that we're doing the right things there. Uh, Bob's doing a, Bob Worley's doing a great job of trying to manage all that, the lead time problems with all the materials he needs to get. Um, but we continue to move forward. Uh, we are starting to, and we're waiting for some design elements for the, uh, the new apartment buildings there by the uh, water tower on Willowbrook. So, um, but we'll be looking to be able to move into that location with fiber as well when it becomes available. Just a couple comments. Um, again, I, I've said this before, but just something really to keep in mind is our staffing is really high right now because we. So the longer these installations drag out, the longer it is not good for us financially. Uh, so it is going to start eroding what we wanted to, to turn around. So just kind of keep that in mind a little bit because it's uh, a pat and it's not their their fault, but again, it's weather. It's you know these type of things. And uh, and we've met with Aspen um, and B and M Ashman uh, in particular. Um, they're both committed to finishing the project by April. Um, it looks pretty steep, uh, but they're throwing as many resources as they can at it. Um, Aspen's brought some more resources to bear, and so is B&M. Uh, so 
everybody's working hard to get it done. Uh, we'll see what happens. How have the customers been responding? So far, we've had really good positive um, feedback from customers. Uh, we haven't had, I believe, uh, the only returns that I've seen are people that have moved. Um, and we've had a few of those that, you know, moved out of the area. But uh, we're not getting a lot. In, in the cable industry, uh, overall, you would have a, a certain amount of returns, you know, of people that would sign up and then decide they didn't want to do it. And, got buyer's remorse and would bail back out but we're not seeing that too much with the fiber um the, some of the folks that some of the folks that have it are really vocal and 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 let us know that it, they, they love it and the rest of them are real quiet and that's fine too well it's um, i have it and just decided to forget it i mean i've had zero problems you yeah just know it's going to work that's good that's that's what we were hoping for and your speeds have been to the roof yeah my more enough for all and we have 30 or 40 devices, and so we have more than enough. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. Like I said, I always attribute it to having a 200 amp circuit on, or box on my house. I don't need 200 amps to run my house, but I certainly don't want to have to turn off my, you know, microwave or so I can run a toaster, or, you know, figure out you know, what, what things I would need to do and what things I can. And there are people in this county um maybe not so much here in cold water but you get over into like hodunk and some of those areas over there where they really do i mean when it when they've when they were home for school they had to they had to make decisions you know parents couldn't couldn't be on the internet while the kids were or vice versa um so they're you know it's not so much within our area um although as you go out towards gerard and i think we sh we will continue to move out um, within our footprint out that way um, to where we can help those people as well. So we are getting quite a few signups in the, you know, we opened up uh, node 13, which is kind of up by the lakes. So I, we think that will be a continue to be a good avenue. But again, you know, we'd love to have done in the city, but we're not picking the pass. So again, I can't beat anybody else up after Friday. So we will, unfortunately, me, Terry, and Chris will probably be the last ones to get it. <laughs> Good news is Paul's moving in next to you, so maybe you can get a little more, uh, get that jumped up next to you, but. You know, yeah. somebody, I, I believe a guy from Aspen asked, well, you're gonna get him hooked up to fiber right away? And I said, no, I, I actually wanna hook him up to cable first so he can see what everybody else is getting. Uh, and then we'll go from there, so. That, that's the impressive part when you go from cable to yeah, you fiber. Gotta, it's like, yeah, Whoa. I think it's good to, to, to have that experience anyway and see what it's like. Yeah. And we also know we're seeing continue to see a decrease of people cutting the cord, you know, and we, we know that cable TV is not in our future. So we, we know that that's coming. So it's but those guys are doing a great job keeping it going. I, you know, I give all the credit to Pat and Jody and Tom and everybody else who was able to keep this place going because they've done they've done the legwork. So this is a it's not a, a me thing. It's a them thing. And then yeah. we'll start decommissioning the cable. Yeah, I don't think we picked any nodes no uh so we haven't uh because of the because we haven't got it as widespread as uh it could be we didn't really want to penalize somebody in a node and say well you have to convert yet because there's quite a few people that can't convert at this point so as, as it gets as we get more of a all the way across footprint then we will start targeting nodes bringing those down and then after all of those are down um there will be a time where we're going to have to shut some people off because we do have those folks that are out there on, um, I can't remember the name, Fisk. off of Fisk Road there. Uh, some folks that are on our electrical footprint that somehow got connected long ago um, to cable and, and those are going to have to go away at some point. So, and Is that yeah. removing it from the, or is it? That's not offering them service. No, yeah. no, no I mean, but uh, just to cut, cut it, Cut the cord and that's it. No, we will have to. Re we, so yeah, we'll we'll unplug stuff, but we'll have to wreck out. Uh, not underground cable, I don't believe, um, but we'll have to wreck out cabinets and pedestals and aerial yeah. um, assets, things like that. Yeah. yeah. So oh, they didn't lash up to the old cable, did they? We did not lash up to. I. I In this say case, that. this is underground out yeah. there. So and, right, right, but yeah. the stuff that's on the power poles. 
they didn't, they didn't, the fiber didn't get to go where our um, old coils with the coils came Oh, out. sure it is. Yeah, it's on okay, the same so thing. Okay, so they'll just, yeah, but well, now, but now there's nothing wrong with the, uh, the tension, like what I'm drawing blank, the, the strand. Strand, thank you. Yeah. So, but yeah, eventually that old stuff is just going to, you'll, you'll say, oh, there's so, an extra cable there. And if it comes out, we'll cut both ends and yep. pull that out. Okay. Yeah. And then as we go through there and we have time, we'll wreck out that stuff as well. So, yeah. And then we will eventually have to, like, if you had an old pedestal, you'll see ours will start coming down. So, where the other, well, all of ours now are below ground and, and underground areas. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, Fisk Road, you know, if this just goes great, you know, that'll be a board decision whether you want to, you know, light that area up. But um, that's not currently in our plan. No. And it's not involved in this first construction phase. No. But they will be the last people we kind of say, hey, you got to make other decisions, or the board will decide to okay. go down. But that'll be, yep. that, that's a couple years down the road still. Yeah, so it's nothing, always. nothing even, I don't want to get people thinking, I live on Fisk Road, I'm getting my internet cut off. That's oh, not, yeah. that, you're going to have years, you know, before that happens, I would. I don't know about years, but yeah, I mean, well, they, they should know it's coming at or, some or, point. Or the county does their fiber. That's, the yeah, fiber. so that's what our hope is, is the county, the county will come and pick it up and, and, and they'll do it. Um, it really, you know, from my perspective, you know, I, I work for both the city and the BPU. My job is, is to better, better the lifestyles of the people that, that, I, that pay me, uh, the citizens and the ratepayers. So going outside of that range really kind of counters that. Um, so if we're going out into a township that uses consumers, well, we're, we're using assets that citizens and ratepayers are paying for to provide services to people that are just going to pay for that rate, for that particular rate. But they're not really invested in the rest of the, the uh, our assets and stuff. So, yeah. That's that's my perspective. Paul might have a different perspective on it, but um, how many is on the waiting list currently for the backlog? Uh, Jody is off this week, so I didn't get to meet with her before the meeting. I am not sure, um, but we are a couple of weeks out still on installations. I but, do know that. The big the big waiting list is hundreds. That's what I'm at. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, this is the whole. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, because like I mean, I'm on the waiting list. You know, everybody in our neighborhood is on the waiting list. Yeah, but we can't. We're not even close to being hooked up yet yeah so. but we do have a lot of folks that are in active nodes <clears throat> underground i don't know what the number is but there are plenty of them that are on that list waiting for the weather to break so that we can get stuff underground we started to put some stuff in the late fall there we started to put some fiber on the ground uh to get to a couple of those people because it froze up right after they already had appointments but it's not something we really want to do. I mean, we'll have to go back and hit it, which is, I guess that's not so bad. I, I just worry about trips and falls and things like that with having wires where they're not supposed to be. So we kind of put a halt to that uh, until the weather broke and then we'll continue on. That's all I got. For Pat? Thank you, Pat. Appreciate sure. the insight. No is there any public comment? See none, we'll move on to the director's report. Okay, quick and brief. Um, power cost adjustment was zero. Uh, one bit of good news for Lori Repka is she's announced her retirement. Uh, so she has been with us since 1997. Uh, again, we'd like to congratulate her on her retirement and uh, uh, her last day is March 31st. So uh, we'll be working with her and then, uh, and I'm done. So I wanna thank you all for everything. So. Appreciate your the support of the board and definitely the good people out there. And so thank you. Yep. Definitely. Okay, hey, Jeff. Jern. Oh, you guys. I didn't be tired. <laughs> so I want to present this to Jeff. You know, for 22 years of service for the city <sighs> and the DPU. And, uh, well, on we, there it says 21 because we thought he was going in December. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's all right. <laughs> But you know, we want to thank you, and you've been oh, okay. an intricate part of the city and the DPU for all those years. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. You have to choke out. Oh, I know. This is me. I don't know why I get so sentimental about it. But.